Hey, what is going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So in this tutorial, we're gonna be creating some flat icons here in After Effects, more specifically a light bulb. And what's great about this tutorial is that we'll be creating it all in After Effects, no Illustrator and no uh, external graphics. And this is what we'll be creating. And it's really a cool little uh, animation going on here. We're creating a basic light bulb. And uh, what you should be able to take away from this tutorial is kind of how to create any sort of flat icon that you want. Um, we're just going to just focus on a light bulb because I think there's a lot of great elements that go into a light bulb. So, and about a week ago, I created a tutorial on animated icons, but I focus more on, I guess, sort of stroke styled icon. So if you're interested in how to create a stroke icon, you can go ahead and uh, watch this video. Um, but in this tutorial, we're going to create straight up, you know, flat icons here in After Effects. So here we are in a new composition. So if I want to create a flat icon, I have to understand what elements go into creating that flat icon. So if we're going to create a light bulb, you know, we might want to start with like a circle and then kind of, you know, build out the base. So let me go here to the ellipse tool, which is underneath the rectangle tool here. And I'm going to click and we'll hold down command and shift to draw out a perfect circle kind of like this and um, it'd be control on a uh, PC. So here we are with our perfect circle. And what I'm gonna do is under the contents, open up the ellipse one, go to the ellipse path one here, and I'm gonna right click it and click on convert to Bezier path. So now we'll be able to add points to the circle. So basically, you know, a, cir you know, a light bulb is gonna be kind of round, you know, usually at the top here, and but then it kind of goes off in this like weird cone shape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the pen tool here and we're going to like add a point like right here and maybe a point over here. And we're going to go ahead and select these three bottom points here and just like drag it down kind of like this. So we're going to focus on this point right here and this vertice right here, we can like kind of drag it in like this and kind of create like a somewhat of a slope like this. And for the most part, that looks pretty good for what we're trying to do. And uh, instead of trying to replicate this on this side, because if I decided to you know, kind of pull this up like this, it's not going to look exactly the same. And for the most part, this does look pretty similar. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just delete this point. I'm going to delete over here. And I'm going to kind of go here and I'm going to like drag uh, these uh, vertices in at the, for the top point here. So we have uh, the vertices right in the middle here. And then I'm going to grab this vertice down here and I'm hold down Alt on my keyboard to make sure I'm just grabbing that vertice only. And I'm going to drag it to the middle here. So now we have a perfect, um, you know, one side of a light bulb. So now all we have to do is go over here, make sure our ellipse one is selected and go up to edit duplicate. And then we'll go ahead and open up the ellipse two, go into the transform ellipse two, and we'll break the chain for scale and we'll set it to negative 100. So now we have a perfect flip. Maybe what I'll do is I'll kind of just move it over a little bit just so they overlap just by a touch. Maybe like that. And I'll go to the fill over here and just maybe change this to like a yellow color like what I should have done before. You know, maybe, maybe like that, that'd be fine. And we'll just copy the hex and then I'll go ahead and make the other one. Okay, there we go. So now, now we kind of have like this base of our bulb here and I'll go here and rename this shape layer bulb. And maybe we'll just go here and maybe move it up just by a little bit. So now we have to create the base of the bulb. So, you know, it has a place to be, uh, you know, kind of screwed in at. So what we're going to do is maybe go back to the ellipse tool and maybe we'll just draw out another perfect circle by holding down alt and or command and shift on our keyboard. And that should be okay. And then once again, we'll go in here to the ellipse one. We'll go ahead and right click the ellipse path one, convert to Bezier path. And uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll hit V on our keyboard to bring up selection tool and we'll make sure that we're inside the path one of our ellipse and we'll just kind of select the point at the top here. Maybe we'll just drag this down by holding down shift. So now we kind of have this. Uh, let me go here and maybe set this to like a darker gray like that. So then we come here and maybe move it over. You know, we kind of have like the base of our light bulb or something like that. And maybe what I can do is I can select both of our shape layers here, go to the align tab. If you don't see the align tab, go up to window align and we can kind of like maybe center that up by using this tool here. Okay, so now everything's perfectly centered, looks pretty good. We can create maybe just a couple more elements. So maybe what I'll do is maybe under the bulb layer here, maybe I'll go back to the pen tool and you know, maybe I'll click a point down here and I'll hold down shift and I'll click at the top here, which will create a perfect straight line and then maybe I'll kind of like come over here, create a jagged line. Maybe I'll create a straight line here. Maybe I'm holding down shift. Uh, maybe we'll come down a little bit. Maybe we'll go up to right here. 
and we'll leave it at that. So then what I'll do is I'll go back into our uh, shape contents here under shape one. I'll go into our fill and I'll delete it, go into our stroke and I'll increase the stroke width by a little bit. And maybe we'll set this to like a dark sort of maybe orange or something, red. Yeah, like I think red would be all right. And then I'll go here under versus line joint and I'll set it to round join. So now we just have to duplicate this. So maybe I'll go here to the shape one, hit command D on my keyboard to duplicate it or control D on a PC. So then I'll go to the transform and then break the scale link and then for and then I'll set it to negative 100 for right there. And so now it's perfectly flipped and then go to the position and move the X position over until these are perfectly joined. Maybe I'll uh, close this up and select both of our shapes here and I'll just kind of use the arrow tools to move them over to the center. So now that looks pretty cool, you know, nice. So then maybe what I can do is go back to our uh, base here and maybe what I'll do is go to the rectangle tool and I'll zoom in, maybe create some details here and I'll just draw out like a rectangle kind of like this and maybe we'll make it like a little bit darker. And then uh, maybe go into the rectangle one, go to the rectangle path and maybe increase the size just by a little bit, make it a little bit thicker. Yeah, that should be okay. And then what I can do is maybe come in here, uh, right click rectangle path one, convert to Bezier path. And then, you know, select the top point here, I'll hold down shift and I'm gonna just kind of bring it into the, like the edge here. So it does, so we can kind of cut it off and then come here and just bring it to the edge here. I'm holding down shift. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to kind of get it close to the edge here. And we'll do the same thing for the other side. You know, click this point, hold down shift, bring it to there. Click this point down here and hold down shift. And I'll maybe adjust this by a little bit. And that's pretty decent. So then what I'll do is maybe I'll go to the rectangle one, duplicate it, and then we'll kind of like drag it down by a little bit, hold down shift so it stays perfectly aligned. And then I'll do the same thing like I did before. All right, so here we are. You know, it's not 100% perfect, but as long as you don't zoom in, it'll be fine. And um, let's go ahead and create just like maybe some uh, brightness around our bulb. So like what I'll do is I'll go to our rounded rectangle tool and I'll kind of draw out like, uh, oh, make sure nothing is selected. And I'm going to kind of draw out like a uh, sort of like, uh, you know, like, a, uh, you know, brightness sort of thing. And, you know, kind of maybe it looks like that. What I'll do is go into the rectangle one, go into the rectangle path, and maybe we'll set the roundness to like 30. So it'll look a little bit more smooth. And we'll set it to, you know, the color of our bulb. Oh, that didn't work. And then we'll go to like the fill here and I'll grab the eyedropper tool and I'll set the color of our bulb. So this next part might be a little bit confusing. You might just want to duplicate this, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add and I'm going to add a repeater. And I'm going to go ahead and set the, uh, go into the direct triangle one transform properties and I'm going to set the rotation to 90 degrees. And then what I'm going to do is, maybe I'll just move this up a little bit. Then what I'm going to do is go into repeater one here uh, go into the repeater one properties here, set the position, the X position here to zero. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the rotation to, to 45 degrees. And then I'm going to the anchor point here and set the Y value here to like negative like 300 or so until I got enough range to go around our bulb like this. So now if I position this into like a good spot, maybe I'll go ahead and adjust the anchor point by a little bit. As you can see, this is now going to be able to wrap around our bulb. So if I increase the copies to say five, as you can see, we now have more brightness ideas here. So um, that's looking pretty good. So what I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and go up to layer, new, null object. And I'm going to go ahead and parent all of our shape layers to this null object. So I can hit S on my keyboard for scale for our null object. And I'm going to scale this down so we can kind of see our bulb. And maybe what else I'll do, since maybe this is kind of thick for me, I'll break the link here and I'll kind of just like make it just a little bit skinny. Maybe, you know, 50% there for the X. And maybe I'll do 52% or something. Yeah, so and I'll relink that and then maybe I'll scale it back up. Okay, so it's looking pretty cool. Oh, ah. Uh. And then maybe I'll hit P on my keyboard for position. I'll just bring it down. So we basically just designed our entire light bulb. So we need to animate it, create, maybe create some shading effects and maybe add some glow to kind of light this thing up. And let's go ahead and animate this first. Let's get the messy stuff out of the way first. So let's go to our bulb first and let's open up the contents and let's go to add and click on um, trim paths. And let's put the trim paths underneath our two shapes here, right above our ellipses. 
And let's go ahead and open that property up and let's set the end percentage to 0%. So let's go ahead and maybe animate this on. So let's say, um, let's go to like two seconds here. Let's click the stopwatch for end and let's maybe move forward in time to like, you know, two seconds and 19 frames and we'll set this to uh, 100%. So now this will animate on uh, just like that. And then maybe what we can do is go to like one, one uh, second here. Uh, go to our ellipse two, open the transform properties, stop click uh, click the stopwatch for position, move it forward in time, and then what we'll do is like we'll just move this off frame like this, and then we'll do the same thing for the other side. We'll go to the ellipse one, transform, click the stopwatch for position, move back to like zero seconds, and we'll just move this off frame like, kind of like this. So everything for the bulb here will kind of just like come together, and then. Uh, we'll animate our little stroke there and then what maybe what we can do is like Right here. We can uh, go to our base here and actually what I'll do I'll just hit P on my keyboard for our base to bring up position and I'll click the stopwatch I'll move that keyframe forward in time and I'll just bring this one down off frame. So now light bulb meets in the middle and Our base kind of meets them and then uh, let's see let's go back to our bulb hit U on our keyboard to bring up all the keyframes and I'll kind of move these keyframes like back over here. So when these kind of meet, maybe I'll move it like right here. So it'll be kind of like that. Maybe I'll drag that keyframe out and do something like that. Okay. Maybe I'll move both of these keyframes forward a little bit. All right, cool. And then let's go to our uh, brightness over here and let's uh, go to the contents, go to the rectangle one, open up the repeater and let's see, let's go like right here and let's click the stopwatch for copies, move that forward in time just by a little bit, maybe to like three seconds and we'll set this to zero. So now this will animate on as the brightness comes on. And it looks pretty cool. And then what I'll do is uh, I'll just bring this all up here and I'll hit U on my keyboard to bring up all of our keyframes. Let's select all of our keyframes here. Hit F9 on our keyboard to make them easy as keyframes. And that should be pretty cool. So now uh, I want to create that glow effect that we saw in our intro and also the shade. I'll create the shading first. So what I'll do is I'll create and go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And my keyboard dies, okay. And then uh, let's go to like the rectangle tool here and let's go like kind of like draw out an entire rectangle mask right down the middle of our animation here. And uh, as you see, our light bulb is not centered properly. So what I'm going to do is go to our null here, hit P on our keyboard and I'll kind of just like move it over until it's like it feels centered and maybe a little bit like that. Okay. And then for, for, for our adjustment layer, I'll go to effect color correction curves and I'll kind of just drag this point down and it'll make our light bulb uh, pretty you know, dark here and of course the background gets affected. So what I'll do is I'll come here, select all of our layers except for our background, go up to layer, pre-compose and we'll call this one light bulb and that's good. So now our light bulb is just affected with that shading. It looks really awesome, you know, it's pretty cool. It's not 100% centered so I'll go ahead and readjust that. All right, so we're all centered up. So now let's go ahead and add that glow effect. So we only want to add it to our bulb layer and let's go to like two seconds here or a little bit past two seconds and we'll click our bulb layer, go up to effect, uh, stylize glow. And uh, let's go ahead and see, let's go maybe set this to alpha channel and uh, let's see, let's maybe decrease the glow threshold by a little bit, maybe increase the radius, maybe, you know, lower the intensity you know, maybe 0.8, so 70, maybe 90 glow radius, and that should be good. And then what we'll do is we'll click a stopwatch for glow intensity, and we'll hit U on our keyboard, bring up the keyframes, and we'll move that keyframe to like maybe three seconds, so like maybe right here, and we'll go back to two seconds, and we'll set the glow intensity to zero. So now the light bulb will kind of just bright up, and with our a little brightness uh, animation there, and we can go back to our main comp here, and maybe what we can do uh, just to sell this effect a little bit further is we can go to our background layer here and go up to effect generate uh, gradient ramp. And let's go ahead and set this to radial ramp and let's set the, uh, the start of the ramp. Let's set that crosshair to the middle of our uh, composition here. 
And then, you know, maybe I'll go to the start color and maybe I'll just set it to that blue color that I had before. And I'll go to our end color over here and maybe I'll just set the entire thing to like maybe black or something. Maybe, you know, that should be good. And then we'll go to like our, you know, two seconds here and we'll go to the end color. And we'll click the stopwatch for the add a keyframe and we'll move to three seconds. And then maybe we'll set it to back to our blue color here. So now, you know, as our light bulb brightens up, the background will as well. So, you know, I think it's a really cool effect and maybe we can go ahead and add some ramp scatter. And then of course, let's not forget to uh, enable motion blur and make sure we go here and turn on motion blur for all of our layers. And then of course, enable the motion blur right here. Uh, so it'll affect everything. So now what we, we need to do is just render this out. And after a quick render, this is what we have. And you know, works perfect and it looks really good. So I hope you guys are able to take a few techniques from this tutorial so you guys can basically create any sort of icon that you can imagine in After Effects. Of course, it's just one icon, so I might continue to expand on this series of icon design inside of After Effects. So just let me know in the comments section below if you want me to continue this series. And um, if you found this tutorial helpful, please drop a like. It helps me out tremendously. And if you're new to the channel, as always, please consider subscribing for more tutorials just like this. And guys, um, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon.